we are officially not in Chicago anymore. Um, like I said in yesterday's video, or the video before this, that I was leaving for Chicago. Man, that highway is loud. I was leaving for Chicago. I'm leaving Chicago for, for a big trip with my father, that big trip being Florida. Um, yesterday, there was a lot of this going on. Yeah, yeah, I was a lot of road looking, a lot, lot more road looking, and then a lot more road looking. So pretty much all we did was look at a road and, tr and drive. So we drove 13 hours yesterday from Chicago to outside Atlanta, Georgia, and now we got four hours left until we're just outside of Orlando, and that is, I think, where we're gonna start fishing um, for this trip. So today should be doing some fishing. We should be doing some fishing today, and we should be catching some fish. Well, I can't guarantee that, but I'm gonna try and catch some fish. Especially 85 degrees here. We went through some rain there between us leaving the hotel and getting here. We hit a bunch of traffic and it's three o'clock. It said we were supposed to get here at noon. It is currently three o'clock. So unfortunately we don't have much time. This park closes at 6.30 so we only have three hours to fish. So we're gonna quickly get this boat uncovered. Um, and I don't have any rods rigged. Oh, I have my tackle organized, but I didn't rig anything. So we're gonna take the cover off, put the boat in the water and just uh, get after it right away. Step one, once you come off a big road trip, is probably put some gasoline in your boat. Currently have zero gas. My dad is um, going to the bathroom and it's just, it's taking him forever. Um, so we gotta go get some gas. Of course we have to get gas. Did you locate the bathroom? Yeah. Did you locate the alligators too? What did the uh, guy say about the alligators? He said don't, don't go in there after uh, sunset. He says if you go in there after sunset, call it a day. <laughs> That's what it, he says? Yeah. So, I ain't going in there. <laughs> One of the park rangers said that the alligators become active at night. Moral of the story is we need to get gas. Um, there's a gas station right out here. He's back on the boat for the first time ever. Just kidding. My dad actually doesn't really fish that much, which is kind of surprising probably to a lot of you guys. He um, He's always kind of just chilling on the boat. He never really wants to fish, but I think tomorrow um, I'm going to convince him to fish. I'm going to buy him a license and stuff. But today we, we've got one hour, so he's just gonna chill. Look at all these birds. It has been like three or four I think November was the last time I took my boat out, so it's been four months. Fired right up, you know, just a beauty. So happy. I'm rigging up a spinning rod, I got a jig on. So my dad now has talked to the uh, Florida um, park rangers about alligators. Now he's currently talking to the uh, police here. Wonder what this conversation is gonna be about. Right here. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Stay down, put them on. Got some good footage. Nice to meet you. You too, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thought you were making more friends. No, I got power poles. Okay, are you ready? Are you feeling good? Yep. It's pretty cool. Love when people come up and say hi to me. Um, but so it wasn't my dad um, unfortunately talking to the police officer. Police officer wanted to come say hello to me. So he says his dad fishes here all the time. He says it's a pretty good lake. I've actually fished here with Jordan Lee two years ago. Um, I don't know really where I was or what I was doing, but we've only got, like I said, a couple hours now since it's four o'clock now after forgetting gas, coming to another launch that's a little bit closer to the lake. And uh, yeah, engine's fired up. Everything's good to go. What are you doing? All right, first spot, throwing a little jig. Are you serious? Really, really Florida? 
I get to fish one spot, and then we get just, it's, I gotta put this away. I think we're gonna have to wait her out. Out of nowhere, there was 0% chance of rain. There was nothing on the, on the radar. There was absolutely nothing. And out of, out of nowhere, just this storm comes. Oh, goodness. Thanks to whoever's dock this is. Uh, hopefully, uh, you don't mind us coming here. Don't you just love Florida? It seems like uh, one second, it's just pouring rain, and now it's sunny again. Good thing we were actually about to go in because of the camera gear, and luckily, whoever's house this is, thank you so much. Um, and no, we did not ask, but we were in we were in dire need here of not breaking this expensive camera. Just one bass, that's all we need, one bass. Not a bad one at all. The first bass in Florida is a nice little large mouth. Just took that little stick bait. Um, I kind of came over some areas, some sand spots here, and I figured there were some fish kind of, I saw some when I cruised by and I came back after that storm. And this is my second cast with a little stinko. What are you doing? Dad, I have a, uh, I have a chest camera. Oh. Okay, we caught two bass now. Big fish. Big fish. Oh! Lost him. I didn't set the hook good at all. That's crazy, I just came back through. Dang it, that was a big fish. Look at this. The worm was like this. Oh my goodness, that was a four pounder. Wow, I just lost a four pounder. Could have made the video sick. How did this happen? Oh my goodness. All right, what's crazy is I came through this area once before, just retied, you know, just got a tangle from that whole ordeal. I think if I would have set the hook a little bit harder, you know, I could have broke off, but it could probably would have penetrated that hook. The problem was like sometimes when you use a stick bait like this, like it will curl over and then look at like the hook point, it was barely exposed. And then, like, you're just there's just no shot of you landing that fish unless you really drive the hook into him. But anyways, I came through here with a jig and a frog and to get a single bite. And now I just had caught two fish and lost one that was four pounds. Easily four pounds. Probably about ten pounds. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. Freaking gar. Oh, there's a spawning bass. Well, there's still bass on beds. Found one on a bed. Lost the big one. Hey, there we go. Look at that right there. Just absolutely crushed the jig. All right. Are we what? Are we leaving? No, we, we still got light left. There's still fish to be caught. Day one is over. Unfortunately, I did not land the big bite I had. I knew, I didn't know this, but I don't know what I'm saying here. I had a chance at really putting together something in the in the one canal that I did get to go fish, and I just didn't make it happen. I caught some fish, I saw some betters, I did a couple things, and uh, just didn't execute on my one key bite there. But all good, I'm gonna get to the ramp, kind of, rig up some tackle. I, I, I had nothing rigged. I had three rods I rigged quickly at the boat ramp. And yeah, so let's get back to the boat ramp, kind of get some food and figure out what our full day tomorrow is gonna be like and what exactly, what lake I'm gonna fish and what I'm gonna try and target as far as cover goes. Who's that? Hello. 
ruining every shot of mine today.